Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to consider compound interest, uh, but more importantly, it's going to consider a small derivation of the compound interest formula uh, in a particular case, in the annual case. But I suppose before we get to the derivation of the formula, let's just have a look at the application of compound interest from a particular, a particular perspective. Okay, so let me just first of all do a timeline. Okay, let's do a timeline. Uh, let's say this is t to represent time, uh, zero indicating that it's today, zero years has elapsed, one indicating that one year has elapsed, two that two years has elapsed, three that three years has elapsed, and so on and so forth. And let's assume that we place a principal investment yeah, in this particular account. Let's say we place 100 euros in the account today. And let's assume interest rates are running at 10%. Okay? Let's assume that the interest rate I is 10%. Okay? So, from an interest accumulation perspective, yeah, uh, this represents the future value of the account at any particular moment in time. And at time zero, when we place 100 euros into the account, we wouldn't expect to receive any reward. Okay? But after one year has elapsed, we would expect to have in the account what we had in the previous year, which is 100 euros, plus a reward for leaving that 100 euros in the account for one year. And if interest rates are running at 10%, the reward we'd expect to have is 10% of our principal investment or the amount that we had at time zero, which is 10% of 100, which is, which is 10 euros. So at the end of one year, or after one year has elapsed, we'd expect to have 110 euros in our account. Continuing in this fashion, uh, after two years has elapsed, we'd expect to have what we had previously, which is 110 euros, plus a reward. Okay, So we'd expect to have a reward for leaving our money in the account for two years. Now, what's important about compound interest is that the interest calculation is always based off what we had in the account in the previous year. Whereas simple interest, the interest calculation is always based on the principal investment at time zero. So in this particular instance here, we'd expect an interest payment or reward to be 10% of what we had in the previous year, which is 10% of 110 euros, which is 11 euros. So after two years has elapsed, we should have what we had in the previous year, which is 110 euros, plus a reward of 10% of what we had in the previous year, which gives us 121 euros in the account after two years. Continuing in this fashion, after one, two, three years has elapsed, what we should have in the account is what we had in the previous year, which is 121 euros, plus a reward, and the reward should be based off what we had in the previous year. So it's going to be 10% of 121 euros, which is 12 euros and 10 cent. So what we should accumulate in the third year, or after three years has elapsed, is what we had in the previous year, plus a reward for that investment, which is 12 euros and 10 cent, which gives us a total of 143 euros and 10 cent. Okay. And we continue in this fashion, accumulating interest on top of interest. Uh, and that's the important uh, differentiating factor between compound interest and simple interest. Let's just state like that again. In the simple interest case, the interest would always be 10% of the principal. So it would always be 10% of 100, which is 10 euros. And what we can see in the compound interest case is that the interest payment, the initial interest payment, is 10% of the year before, which is 10 euros, to give us a total of 110 euros. After another year has elapsed, the interest payment is 10% of what we had in the previous year. Okay. So let's try to derive a general formula for this particular uh, type of interest application. Okay. So once again, let's do a small table. Okay. Let's do a table. And let's say down the first column we have T for the number of years that have elapsed. And let's say we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and let's say 4. And continues in this particular fashion. Okay. 
Uh, and let's try to generalize. Instead of placing 100 euros in the account, let's put a general value, a principal amount or a principal value. So, at time zero, what we have in the account is our principal investment. And that's all we have in the account. We don't have anything else added onto it. It's just the principal investment. Okay, so that's the easy case. And let's see what happens after one year has elapsed. So after one year has elapsed, what we have in the account is what we had in the previous year. What we had in the previous year is our principal value plus an interest payment. And the interest payment is I percent of what we had in the previous year. So it's I percent of PV. So it's IPV. Once again, using a small bit of algebra, this simplifies to be PV times 1 plus I. Okay. So, after one year has elapsed, what's in the account is PV times 1 plus I. Okay. So, let's assume that two years has elapsed, and let's see what's in the account. So, after two years has elapsed, what we should have is what we had in the previous year. Okay. And from a general perspective, what we had in the previous year is PV times 1 plus I. But we should get a reward. And the reward should be I percent of what we had in the previous year. So the reward should be I times what we had in the previous year, which is I P V times 1 plus plus I. Okay. And now using a little bit of algebra, I know this looks a little bit complicated here, okay, but with a bit of algebra, we have a common term here and here. There's a PV times 1 plus I here, and there's a PV times 1 plus I here. So let's take that out. So we have a PV times 1 plus I common. What's left? Well, we have one of them here. So what's left behind when we take that out is 1. And when we take the PV times 1 plus I away here, what we're left with is plus I. Okay. Now, we know that x times x is the same as x squared, so this becomes PV times 1 plus I squared. Okay. Continuing, after 1, 2, 3 years has elapsed, what we should have is what we had in the previous year, which is PV times 1 plus I squared, plus an interest payment. And the interest payment should be I percent of what we had in the previous year. So it should be I times PV times 1 plus I squared. Okay. And once again, we have something common between this term and this term. There's a PV times 1 plus I squared here, and there's a PV times 1 plus I squared here. There's one of them, and there's I of them there. So let's take the PV times 1 plus I squared out, and let's see what's left behind. Well, there's one of them here, so what's left behind is 1, plus... What's left behind here when we take it out is, is I. And this gives us PV times 1 plus I cubed. Okay. Let's just do this once more. Okay. So after three years has elapsed, we have PV times 1 plus I cubed in the account. So after four years has elapsed, we'll have what we had in the previous year, which is PV times 1 plus I cubed plus an interest payment, I percent of what we had in the previous year. So it's I times PV times 1 plus I cubed. And once again, there's a PV times 1 plus I cubed common here and here. So let's take that out. It's a PV times 1 plus I cubed times what's left behind here is a 1. What's left behind here is, is an I, which gives us PV times 1 plus I to the power of 4. Okay. Uh, and hopefully we can actually see a general case coming through here. And the question is, well, what have we got in the account after t years? Okay. Well, let's have a look at the commonality between each of these future values. Okay? The only thing that's changing in relation to the future values is the exponent on this term, okay? or the power on this term. And we can actually see in year 4, the power is 4. In year 3, the power is 3. In year 2, the power is 2. In year 1, well, the power is 1. Okay? And in year 0, well, the power is, this is equivalent to PV times 1 plus I to the 0. Because any number raised to the power of 0 is simply equal to 1. PV times 1 is PV. Okay? So that gives us a general case. Uh, after t years, what we end up with is, we end up with, it's PV times 1 plus 1 plus i raised to the power of t. Okay. Which tells us now 
that the future value, the future value of an investment of PV, uh, if interest is applied using a compound interest,